Okay, morning everyone. Lovely to see you all if you'd like to take your seats. And then we can catch up afterwards. <laughs> okay, so we've got the notice sheets this week and we've got um, the notices on the screen. I'm not going to say too much. Uh, we've got our normal weekly activities of prayer meeting, um, chat on Zoom tonight and house groups this week. But there's a couple of things I just wanted to share with you. Um, so on Monday evening, we had a leadership team meeting and it was a beautiful time. We were sharing what we wanted prayer for and we were praying for each other. And one thing that came out of that was we all were praying for boldness. And whether that was boldness to share with other people or boldness to talk to people at work or boldness in our prayers with each other, just to talk to each other. And that's what we were praying for. And there's a couple of opportunities where we can show boldness as a fellowship. So we've got um, some cards here. There's some at the back and there's some on the table. And we've got an opportunity to invite someone to Alpha and an opportunity to invite someone to the Easter family service with baptism. So please be praying about who you can invite. And I encourage you to take a card and give that to that person. And we were also praying for everyone in this building to be full of boldness as well. So as you come this morning, I pray that you'll feel God's boldness in this place. And if you have a word, if there's anything you want to say, then feel free to do that. So let's open in prayer. Father, we just thank you that you're with us this morning. Father, we thank you for your love. Father, we thank you that it overwhelms us. Father, we thank you that your spirit is moving in this place. And Father, we just pray this morning that your spirit will minister to every single person here. That Father, whatever they need from you this morning, that they will receive it. Father, we thank you that we can come here in freedom. We thank you, Lord, we can come into this place. And Father, however our week has been, may we worship you this morning from the depths of our heart. We ask this in your name, Father. Amen. Nicky, could I make another notice, please? Can I mention the Tuesday focus on Tuesday when we've got the choir coming? And now I would feel embarrassed if the choir is bigger than the congregation <laughs> because the numbers on Tuesday are sadly going down. So if any of you were in a position to come and to support us on Tuesday, I would very much appreciate it. I'd like to stand and sing at the name of Jesus. is not holy, all that is not 
true crown him as your captain in temptations all let his will enfold you in its light and power brothers this Lord Jesus shall Turn again with his father's glory, with his angels' train, for all wreaths of empire meet upon his brow, and our hearts confess him king. Um, standing in the center of the throne surrounded by the four living creatures and the elders the lamb appeared to have been killed had seven horns and seven eyes which are the seven spirits of God that have been sent throughout the whole earth the lamb went and took the scroll from the right hand of the one who sits on the throne as he did so, the four living creatures and the 24 elders fell down before the lamb. Each had a harp and gold bowls filled with incense, which are the prayers of God's people. So our prayers were at the throne of God's kingdom. They sang a new song. You are worthy to take the scroll and to break open its seals, for you were killed and by your death, you bought for God people from every tribe, every language, every nation, and every race. You have made them a kingdom of priests to serve our God, and they shall rule on earth. Again I looked, and I heard angels, thousands and millions of them. They stood around the throne, the four living creatures and the elders, and sang in a loud voice. The lamb who was killed is worthy to receive power, wealth, wisdom, and strength, honor, glory, and praise. And I heard every creature in heaven, on earth, and in the world below, and in the sea, all living beings in the universe. And they were singing to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb be praise and honour, glory and might, forever and ever. Amen. And the four living creatures answered, Amen. Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. And this morning, Father, we just ask that as we give our praise and worship to you, that, Father, it will be received in heaven. That, Father, you will know that you are the King of kings and the glory comes from you into our hearts. Father, we thank you that we can worship you. We thank you that we can stand together and sing with the angels. Father, we just ask this morning that we'll meet with you and that, Father, we will feel that we've left this place changed to how we walked in. We ask this in your name, Father. Amen. Amen. Let's sing now, all oh, heaven declares the glory of the Lord. the beauty of the Lord. 
Yes, Father, we just thank you that you are holy. We thank you, Father, that you are worthy. And we thank you, Father, that you are the one that sits on that throne. Let's sing now, holy, holy, holy. Let us then hold firmly to the faith we profess. For we have a great high priest who has gone into the very presence of God, Jesus, the Son of God. Our high priest is not one who cannot feel sympathy for our weaknesses. On the contrary, we have a high priest who was tempted in every way that we are, but did not sin. Let us have confidence then and approach God's throne where there is grace. There we will receive mercy and find grace to help us just when we need it. We're gonna sing now as we go into time of communion, Jesus stand among us.
be a sweet agreement at the meeting of our eyes. Oh, Jesus, we love you. So we'll gather here. Join our hearts in unity and take away. So to you we're gathering out of each and every land. Christ the love between us at the joining of our hands. Oh Jesus, we love you. So and take away our fear. Jesus, stand among us at the breaking of the bread. Join us as one body as a worship Jesus, we love you, so we gather here, join our hearts in unity and take away the Okay. As we come this morning to uh, the bread and wine, it's just amazing the power, what Jesus demonstrated that day. So when he died on that cross, when he gave his body broken for each one of us, when he shed his blood to wipe away our sins, and then three days later, when he defeated death, and asked us to worship and remember him forever. And it's funny, I was thinking over the last few days, how do we come to the table? And you know what, we all come from different places and go through different things. And you know, last Sunday, I was completely broken. I was broken with grief. And it was the first Mother's Day without my mum and I really, really struggled. But you know what, in that broken heartedness and in that weakness, there was only one thing I could do and that was to worship. And I spent hours singing and reading and just praying. And do you know what? Because I was so broken, because I was so weak, God spoke to me and he could be strong. And do you know what? I wouldn't change that for the world because in that brokenness, Christ was a reality and I felt him so much, it was beautiful. And you know, another condition, if you're broken this morning, that's okay. He can talk to you. He might also have a hard heart. And I was thinking about this as well, you know, things we go through in our lives, sometimes we can't cope with them. So rather than deal with them, we bury them and we push them down. But do you know what? There is freedom in release. And if we come to Jesus and say, look, this is so difficult, I've been through this, but if we bring it to him, he can start to break down our hardened heart and he can start to give us his peace and his joy in that situation. And you know, I was also thinking we can come with a weary heart. Sometimes we're just exhausted. We can't get out of bed. Our joints are aching. We're tired. We're worn down with life. We've got all these problems. But once again, in that weariness, God will give you strength 
and he will come and minister to you. And do you know what? We might also have a good heart. We might be feeling great this morning and full of worship and we just want to give our heart to him. So whatever your condition this morning and whatever your heart is in, he will bless you. And I just pray this morning that he will minister to you as you take this bread and receive this wine. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that we can be real with you. Father, help us to minister to one another, to pray to one another, to because that to receive this and to receive this wine. We are forgiven. only person that ever defeated death and father help us to celebrate every day of our lives father just be with us all this morning i pray amen the lord jesus on the night he was betrayed took a piece of bread gave thanks to god broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you that this bread represents your body and we thank you for what it means to each one of us. Amen. In the same way, this cup is God's new covenant, sealed with my blood. Whenever you drink it, do so in memory. Father, we just thank you for this wine. We thank you that it reminds us that our sins have been washed away and that, Father, we stand in victory with you. Amen. Thanks.
bread and drink from this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. You are always fighting for us, angels all around. My delight is found in knowing that you wear the victor's crown. You're my help and my defender. You're my saviour and my friend. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. <clears throat> At the mention of your greatness, in your name, I will bow down. In your presence, fear is silent, for you wear the victor's crown. Let your glory fill this temple. Let your power overflow. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. You are ever interceding as the lost become the found. You can never be defeated, for you wear the victor's crown. You are Jesus the Messiah. You're the hope of all the world. By your grace, I live and breathe to worship you. At the cross, the work was finished. You were buried in the ground, but the grave could not contain you, for you wear the victor's crown. We can stand and sing now as the deer pants for the water. As the deer pants for the water, so my soul longs after you. You alone are my heart's desire, and I long to worship you. You alone are my strength, my shield, to you. Father, we thank you for these beautiful words. Father, we thank you that we can worship you freely. And Father, as the children go out now, we ask that you'll bless them. Bless the time together. May we continue to worship you and learn more about you. May we have fun. And Father, may we just sense your presence. And Father, as Darren comes to speak, Father, take control of his words. May Father, he speak your words. And Father, give us hearts to listen and to receive what you have to say. We ask this in your name, Father. Amen. Okay, children, if you'd like to come out to the back, please.
Uh, Sam, are you coming to do the prayers? Thank you. morning. Uh, so First Timothy chapter 2 verses 1 says, I urge then first of all that petitions, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for all people, for kings, and for those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. This is good and pleases God our Saviour, who wants all people to be saved and come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God, one mediator between God and mankind, and the man Jesus Christ, who gave himself as a ransom for all people. So scripture tells us that it is good for us to pray for all people. First of all, it is important we pray for everyone. Everyone needs to be prayed for. Scripture says also that we men ought always to pray and never cease so we ought always to pray for everyone and for those in authority and the only reason we have peace in our land is when everyone comes to know christ our lord and so we, we will continue to pray for the people in the authority that as they make decisions they will not affect our lives i'll be able to live in peace we we'll continue to pray for ukraine uh that whatever is going there on there that the lord his will will be done his kingdom may come uh, we'll continue to pray for Derek. And how is Derek, um, Jean? Okay. So we continue to pray for Derek. Uh, he needs the Lord's peace and encouragement. And you need prayers as well, Der uh, Jean. Uh, when you're a carer, it's a very, very hard job, believe me. Especially if you're looking after an adult. Uh, when you're looking after a child, it's different. When an adult is lost his independence and is to become, has kind of come to rely on you, and they could become very grumpy, very, very, very stubborn. So we'll pray for you that God will give you the grace to be able to deal with that. And also pray for peace for, for Derek. Uh, any other things we need to pray for this morning, Ali? So we need to pray for all the doctors, the nurses, and all the hospital workers who are looking after patients in hospital, that God will continue to use them and just give them the kindness and the peace and the grace to be able to do their job because we rely on them so much. Um, anything else we need to lift up to God for prayer? Any other things, uh, uh, Phil? Pray for all those who have COVID, um, whatever they are, that God will be their strength and their healer. Um, anybody else we need to lift up in prayer? Continue to pray for the Church of Christ, that God will continue to build his people and to draw men unto himself. Because this is our job here, we're not here just as a club, but I believe we're here to be a light unto our community and let God do his work in us first of all and then through us so we can touch other lives through how we live and what we do and what we say. And I think that is very, very important. So we're going to pray for these things. Um, I don't know, I continue to be led to pray the Lord's Prayer all the time. We're going to start off with that. 
if you just put your hand on your right on, on your heart we're going to pray together lord's prayer uh, it's just on screen we're just going to pray together our father in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on us as it's in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever amen father we just come before you because you're the god of all creation father god we have no other god besides you father and Father, we come to you in humility. And Father, we ask you in the name of Jesus. Because you've given us that name that's above every other name, Father. Father God, we just come before you right now. And we lift before you all these issues that have been granted before you right now, Father God. We thank you for Derek's life, Father God. Father, we thank you because he is your son. Father, we thank you because he knows you. And Father, I thank you above all that you know him, Father. And I know that, Father God, you wish above all things that, Lord, he may be in good health, Father God. Father, we pray that, you, Lord, you shall glorify yourself through him, Lord God. That we may know that you're the God of mercy, the God of peace, the God who heals the sick. Lord God Almighty, you who open the eyes of the blind. Father God, we ask you, may you be his God. May you be his strength. Father, we pray for, for Jean, Father God, as she continues continues to look after Derek. Lord, grant her the grace, oh Father God, and the peace, Father, to be continued to look after your son, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Father God, for all those NHS people, Lord. And God Almighty, you've called them, Father God, and given them the strength to look after others, Lord. Father, we pray, oh Father, you may work your work in them, Father God. May your spirit do its work in every man, every woman. Father God, from the cleaners to the doctors to the nurses to everyone, Father God, that are working together as a team, oh God, to do work in the people's lives, Father God. Father, we pray for them in the name of Jesus. And Lord God Almighty, may you be Lord of all in every situation heavenly father we welcome you in every hospital father all over the nations father may you be lord may you be king may you rule and reign in your peace in your comfort heavenly father Father, we just want to thank you for our nations, my Father. Father, we pray for this government. We pray for those in authority, oh Father. Father, we pray for them and lift them before you. That God Almighty, that whatever decisions they'll make, oh God, they will not affect our lives, oh Father God. Father God, as we are going through these seasons of inflation and, and high prices in energy, Father God, we pray, oh God, that you will give us the grace to go through this season, Heavenly Father God. Because only you, oh God, are able to take us through this season, Father God. May your peace that surpasses all understanding, Heavenly Father, be upon us, O God, and give us the wisdom and the grace, Heavenly Father, that we may go through this season and time, O Father, without grumbling, O God. May you be our God, O Lord. May you be God over Ukraine. May you be God over Russia. May you be God over England. May you be God over Europe. May you be God over Africa. May you be God over America and South America and every nation in the world, O God. Jesus, may you rule in your power, O Father God. We welcome in every nation. Let your presence rule and reign in the hearts of men, O oh Father God. We thank you and we praise you, O oh God, for the work that you've studied in our lives, O oh Father. Continue to rule and reign in our hearts, O oh Father God. And your kingdom may come and your will may be done on this earth, O oh Father God. And Father God, I pray for those who are still going through grief, oh Father. My God, my make, I pray in Jesus' name. You're the God of comfort. You're the God who heals hearts, oh Father God. There are many hearts that are broken, oh Father God. Father God, I pray for them in the name of Jesus, oh Lord. Father, I ask in Jesus' name that Lord, you may touch them. May you may visit them, oh Father, in their places where they're all grieving, Father God, about their loved ones, Heavenly Father. I pray that your peace be upon them, oh God, and the oil of joy may visit them in the name of Jesus father we give you praise we continue pray for your church oh God Jesus you promise that Lord you build your church and the gates of hell will never prevail against his heavenly father and father God we rebuke every work of darkness father God that's upon your people oh God father God anywhere that being deceived of the kingdom of darkness father we ask that your light so shine upon your church and Lord your name be glorified through us father continue to do your work in us and 
and through us, Father. Oh, to the glory of your name, we welcome you in our hearts, and we praise you and adore you. In Jesus' name we ask, and we pray. Amen. As I said that, I would ask you guys a question to see and talk among yourselves. What is our purpose? What is our purpose? I say to humanity, and you want me to say, what is our purpose as being believers? And you can talk to the person next to you. If you haven't met that person next to you, say hello. I, I kind of want to do the anthem thing and say, peace to the Lord with you guys. You should be doing it more often. So, see next to someone new and say hello to them. What is our purpose? Why did God create us? Okay, stop there, and I love when you can talk. It means you can talk more at coffee time. Got yeah, you talking. So let me give them some answers. But like, I don't think I don't think there's any wrong answer, by the way. Again, I just want to know what you think. Why do you think God has created us? Let me hear some comments. Anyone? To love Him, glorify Him, worship Him, serve Him, enjoy Him, keep His commandments, relationship with Him. Wow, you're right. You've read my notes, by the way. No. <laughs> I want to put a verse which I'm going to be preaching on. It's a short little verse. And I pray that the Holy Spirit is a lot of... I'm going to do a lot of verses. So I'm going to let the verses really speak for themselves. I think sometimes we, we need to let God speak through the verses. So whatever you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it for the glory of God. That is my t content today I'm talking about, that we should be doing everything for the glory of God. Now you can say, why is that? Let's go back from Genesis, right from the beginning. As we know, in Genesis 1, 26, God said to us, let us make man in our image, in the likeness of him. So we may rule over the fish and the sea and the birds, over the livestock, the animals, creatures. You, most of you know this. So God created his image in us. And through what we do, he wants really his glory to be revealed through us. But we bodged it up. I hope it's okay to say bodge. We messed it up, as we know. And we've, we've well, obviously, we're hearing from, when we celebrate Easter, you'll hear more about, obviously, coming to Christ. You'll probably hear more in this sermon about, obviously, we need Christ. But from the beginning, we had God's glory on us. I remember once being in college once. It was very interesting. It was, some people found, found it really sacrilegious. It was a fair thing. It was on, can't, actually, I can't remember what, what, what it actually was now, the subject or the, but... The first lesson it was, all first years, and this guy come in and said, how can we believe in God? There is a God. And he had the Bible, and I think obviously it's dramatic, he just threw the Bible in the bin. <gasps> I know, forgive me, but it was just a shock. There were people like, ah, how dare you? And I obviously got that reaction. He said, imagine there's no Bible. How are people going to know? And again, one thing he did say, which I think we can all believe, he believed that we all have God's plant in us, in, implanted in us. We all have a conscience, even, even evil people do, when they stop and think. Sometimes we do things and we think, oh, I didn't like that, without anyone telling us. So I do believe, even the non-believer, we all have the image of God within us. We have God's glory. But as that song we sung today, actually I'm going to try and find that song. I really did like that, as a deer pants for a water. So we have the spirit of God. We have all, everyone here has their own spirit. Their character is your spirit. 
God wanted us to obviously have communion, worship in spirit and in truth, our spirit and his Holy Spirit being guided. And I love the, the words that we sung today, and I want to put it up today, as a deer. As a deer, and I think it was here where it said about yielding. There we go. You alone, so sorry, my soul, you alone are my heart, self, oh, no, thank you. You alone are my strength, my shield. You alone may my spirit yield. I pray today what you hear that your spirit within you will yield. There are two things that your spirit will yield to it will either yield to the flesh which God said the flesh counts for nothing, or it's going to yield and surrender into spiritual things. Now, for some of you, even maybe later watching, what I'm speaking, if you don't have the Spirit of God or yielding, everything I'm speaking is going to sound foolish. Because man without a spirit, spiritual things are foolish. So again, if you are ranting and raving what I say here today, take that up to the Lord. If you want the Lord to bless you and you want to follow his life, and it says the spirit gives life, flesh is death. We know the great news is this flesh, this body, will be created anew. And interesting enough, and sorry I keep going on about it, but as I'm going through this weight loss, as you can see, it's interesting that I'm spending a lot of time on my flesh, which is still good, I think I have to do this, I'm thinking, what about my spiritual life? I'm being very disciplined now with my cream cakes. I'm being very, but I'm thinking, but how am I translating to my spiritual? Am I worried too much about my physical, which actually in the end is going to just die in ashes? And I think for us, we'll be careful. What are we chasing after? It's not a bad thing. Because in a minute, you'll, you'll learn that everything that we do, even what, what did God just say? Everything that we put in our mouths. You saw that verse from the beginning, which we don't say that at the beginning. Whatever you eat or drink. Sometimes what we eat, and I'm saying it because where I am, is not good for us. We know that. And I'll tell you what's not good for us. And I'm glad my wife's not here, but she probably she, she is here right now. That's okay, I always say that, but she's here. But the stuff I'm going to eat, if I'm not careful, could kill me quickly. I'm going to say it that bluntly, I have to. Sometimes we wonder, sometimes I'm glad there were a few Christians actually came up to me and said, well, before I had this, you need to lose a bit of weight. I worry about you. Thank you. Please don't look at me if I'm big and go, oh, you're, and I love the English thing, you're looking healthy. I told my wife this, if anyone ever says to me I'm looking healthy, they basically mean you're looking fat. <laughs> and I used to get that. So I used to go in there, oh, you're looking healthy today. And then my wife said, oh, they're calling you fat. I know they are, but it's being English. Please, again, being loving about it. I thank people who have spoken to me. Obviously, I didn't listen. That's one thing. I'm not going to come, uh, no condemnation. If you have a problem with your weight, which I have, it had to come from within. But when it came from within, then all the people spoke to me. That truth, I now go to them and say, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then the others, I'm like, hmm. Because I said, I remember the, uh, the other day, I said, yeah, I'm fat and it's not good. It's quite ugly. No, it's great. What do you mean it's great? It has diabetes. I could die early. It's not good. And we need to sometimes do that for someone we love. We need to be firm sometimes. And that was just going off there. So what do we eat or drink? Are we giving even our consumption of food and drink to the Lord? Are we doing that? We know gluttony is a sin. Not being preached much, is it, in the church? Gluttony is a sin. Having too, maybe going too many buffets, is that a good thing? Seriously, do we really need it? I'm really challenging people. When there are people starving out there, as someone once said, if you had the world about just using America and about England, it would, to sustain America how it is, it would take seven worlds, seven, for how much they consume, materialism, food, seven. So America itself is indebting most of us, and probably we're the same as well. So think, are we that problem? I read as well, again, it was shocking, and sorry, obviously I'm on this diet thing. It's about £10 billion the NHS spend because of people being overworked. £10 billion. That's huge. Where could that money go? But again, I'm not condemning anyone because it has to come from within. It took me a long time. 
But please be supportive as a community and thank you for your support of not giving me any cream cakes and biscuits. I really appreciate that. Anyway, let's move on. So we have got the image of God within us. Everyone who is called by your name, you've been called by your name. Actually, everyone has been called. Jesus died for everybody. Whom I created for, for what? My glory. We could just stop there. That should be our first thing, and that's what we do when we come to God. We give him the glory that beyond, that belongs to him. I know that's sometimes hard, no eye has seen, but if you look around and you see the beauty and you believe God has created this world, you could at least say to God, thank you for the heavens and for the earth. We've got to come to his throne and praise him. That is our duty. I know when we make things, let's say we're a creator and we make things, we want that too. We would like to get some credit. God himself too. He's created for us, but we need to give him the glory that's within us to say, God, we want to show everybody your glory. How do we do that? I'm going through lists now how we actually do that. There are many more. I could be here for hours. So forgive me if I forget things. I'm going to do the best I can. I think the first thing we do is we praise him. We come into fellowship and we praise. If you understand why do we praise, if you're new at church, we praise him together. That's something we need to do. We sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Sing to the Lord, praise his name, proclaim his salvation day and day, day after day. We give him praise. Declare his glory among the nations. Again, that's our witness. Declaring his glory among the nations. And the glory is within all of you. For great is the Lord and most worthy, oops, sorry, for great is the Lord and most worthy of praise. He is to be feared above all gods. For all gods of nations are idols, but the Lord made the heavens. Splendor and majesty are before him. Strength and glory are in his sanctuary. Ascribe to the Lord all the families of the nation. Ascribe to the Lord's glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Bring an off offering and come into his courts. By us praising him, we are now learning going into obedience. That's how we do. We are obedient. We start praising. We are now almost thinking about it, doing the first great commandment. Does anyone know the first greatest commandment? All your mind, your heart, and that's a good way to start, by praising him. By praising him is a start. If you feel like you can't do much anything, start from praise. As you hear what Nikki said, what did Nikki say? I praised I praised him. And what is she? And she said, I then sent a presence. Yes. Where you praise, you will, ought, you, will, you will enter into his gates with thanksgiving. Not just like, hi, here I am. He's the almighty. He's the master. We need to show other people how we enter into that glory. Just how Moses went up to the mountain's top. And when he was in a mountain top, people saw the glory. Are people seeing glory on you? Are people seeing that glory in you? Are you entering worship and prayer? What we do in secret, God will also honour. Are we doing that? Or are some of us, not all, coming and we're doing at church? We need to do it beyond. Worship should be, and I see great worship, it should be part of life. And it gets us through. I hope most of you who come here find this place as a sanctuary and go, this place, I'm really full peaceful. But we know this is only an extension. There are many places we can find God. God is all around us, not confound in this building. So what this church does, I hope we can encourage you and discipline, do this in your personal life. Worship, prayer, encouragement. If we can do a church service in our lifestyle, how much victory would you get? Because at the moment, which is great, I don't see much fighting when we talk. It's lovely. The unity we have is amazing for an hour and a half. Or something's two. <laughs> Forgive me. But then as soon as we leave the building, then we see this unity. Can we not bring that same unity within us? The same glory within us? 
As we see in Exodus, you've got to realise, we're worshipping God, but be careful. God also is a jealous God. It says there in the Bible, do not worship any other God, for the Lord whose name is Jealous is a jealous God. He is very jealous. And we know what we can worship. Some of us could worship food. Can't wait to go for an Indian tonight. <laughs> we can worship our food. We can worship things. But do we, do we have this anticipation and worship to God as we do with our food, as we do in what we do in our relationships, in our finances? Are we putting things over God? Are we worshipping other things which are idols? Or are we, again, sacrifice? Another thing that I think I remember one of the verses we've seen or I may have missed, sometimes when we praise God, it's a sacrifice. It's not easy. Christianity is not easy. It's not for the faint heart. I'm going to say that right now. You try and do it on your own, good luck. We know, as we've heard in the past, and we'll hear about the present, that God's given his spirit so he'll counsel us and help us. When we don't know what to say, the Holy Spirit will help us. So if you're struggling right now, just say, Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God was hovering since beginning of time, then was working through Jesus, and then when Jesus died, said, I give you the Holy Spirit. It's here, and Pentecost, it came upon us, and you will now have God within you. It's mind-blowing, I know. I said to my wife the other day, it's mind-blowing that all of us look at the physical and we don't look at the spiritual. The only way I actually saw the spiritual, and I've, I've, I said to my wife the other day talking, is when I saw two people pass from life to death. If you ever seen them taking the last breath? Wow. At that time, I've actually saw, wow, we are just a shell. We are just, just a shell. And it was sad as well, and, and sorry to say it, but my, my wife is here, but it's sad after all, obviously wanted to see the mum, and, and after all, it's like, honey, it's just a shell. Her spirit is departed. And there is a time we just got to let go. There's healing, obviously, and when you see, and then eventually it's like, it's just a shell. And that's the hardest part, you don't want to let go. But then you realise it's just a shell. It could be any, it's just like a costume, which anyone can wear. But when you see, when you see that last breath go, and you look and you think, wow, there definitely is a spirit within us. If we could just understand that spirit and concentrate on that spirit of God, because that's what God wants and is our, is our spirit. We know that the spirit, where is our spirit going to go? And we know the good news is God says, I will give you a new body. Amen. A new resurrected body. And some people may have problems with that and say, well, I'm not sure. Well, if you believe in creation, the virgin birth, come on. You don't think God can create a human body? And these are spiritual things I'm talking about. This is by faith, by faith, by faith. No, I have seen, but by faith, that's our hope. And the nice thing about by faith is some of you who are believers have experienced God's work within you, so you know God is God. And if you, and if you want to ask people, please, how is God real to you? I want to know, please, show him his glory. Oh, that's the one I was looking for. Praise, I believe, as Christians can only come through knowing Jesus Christ. Only. Sometimes we can do it without Christ and it becomes religion. But through Jesus, therefore, let us offer to God a sacrifice of praise. A sacrifice. The, fruits, the, the fruit of our lips that openly profess his name. It's going to be a sacrifice. Here, it may be a joy. When you go to work and you've got to profess his name, that's a sacrifice. Because you know what's coming. Oh, they're going to laugh at me. Oh, dear. Or they're going to they're gonna say, oh, I'm one of them. God tells us to be set apart. Renew your mind. You're not of the world. You're of me. Holy peace, people, as we talked before, will be persecuted. It's all in the Bible. So in a way, you know what's going to happen. But God says, when you're weak, I will be strong. Don't worry what the words you're going to say. Just open it and God will give you the words. How many times do we say, I'm not going to say it, I don't want to say. I'll give you a little confession today. And I hope I'm doing well today. All my notes were gone today. All my notes. <laughs> Luckily, I've done some of it. But I looked at email, they've gone. And I'm like, God, okay, please help me. Please help me. And I hope, I hope God is working through this. So again, sacrifice of praise. Remember, it's not going to be easy. 
It's not going to be easy sometimes. You know that. Place like this is great. It's giving us, I think church gives us discipline and order. But God wants to take this into the world. And sometimes we only stop here. Even I'm guilty. I can have some great time, two, three hours, worship here, or not, not sorry, as in that long. Then I go home and I haven't done five minutes. Yeah, so that's me as well. I don't know if that's you sometimes. Yeah, you can, you can. And I'm looking at some people, I won't look. Yeah, because we've got distractions. We have our TVs. We have what we like to do. Jesus says, love the Lord with your God, with all your heart. We talked about that. I think heart is with the worship. With all your soul, knowing what you're looking after. Are you looking after your spirit, spiritual things, and with your mind? I'm going to keep saying this. We learned this in the Revelation. God's way is higher than our ways. I'll say that again. God's way is higher than our ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. And that's why, and I'm going to say it again, people who don't have that belief try to change doctrine. Trying to change it. Well, the Bible's outdated. Well, where are you getting your God from? Seriously, where are you getting it from? From a little feeling? Because even God says, be careful of your own feelings. And, I, and I'm glad to say this is a Bible-believing church. And there are going to be times you look at the Bible and think, oof, don't like that one. Please don't leave it out. There's some things that you have to work out. You haven't worked out yet. There are elephants in the room. You think, oh, but to God, they're not elephants. You've got to think. God's way is his way. God will deal with it. And that's going to be hard. Yeah, but God, I've got these people, you know, but give it to God. Show them the love of Christ, yes, and let the love of Christ change them. I don't think we've got to heap doctrine and say, oh, well, what you're doing is wrong. Give them the love of Christ. Let God change them. I really believe that. But if they ask you if this is right, maybe you've got to say, oh, no, it's not. But don't be quick to judge. It's another thing. Just because we know our doctrine, be very careful because maybe, again, they don't have the mind of Christ. So they're not going to yield to that. They're yielding to the flesh. Let's face it, most of us, what we struggle with are fleshy things. And then you end up going, well, I was born that way. Really? Really? Show me in the Bible where you're born that way. Show me. Yeah, but the world says it. Um, I thought we were meant to be separated from the world. Yeah, we can upset someone. I thought God loves you and God will deal with it. These are honest truths I've got to say. If you are Bible, but, oh, you, well, but things have changed. Yeah, have they? If they've changed, let's throw away the Bible and then everything is according to what I say, which is not, by the way, which is not at all. So again, love him. We've done the first commandment. The, the, the first commandment was to love the Lord with all your God. So we're loving him. And we know as well that loving him is only from, we can only get love from who? Where does love come from? Good. God's love. It's a gift. We cannot love how God asks us. Because God says to you, love me. But then God loves us. And he loved us. How did he love us? We all know this. How did God love us? He gave his only son, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross. Innocent death. Innocent death. That death should be all on us. All of us. All of us should be your death right now. Sin equals death. There was forgiveness in Christ. So what God asks for, again, you may pant, you may like ponder. He asks us to love our neighbour as ourself. Some of these could be hard. Your neighbour, which I believe is the person next to you, in, in a sort of, it could be anyone at work. You might want to love these people, or it could be easy. The second one, as yourself. I don't love myself, and I don't love them. There's a cop out. I'm grumpy, so I'm not going to love them. No, 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 no. As yourself, basic God's mean. If I have loved you, and you've received my love, then you love them like I love you. The fruit of the Spirit, as we know in Galatians, love, joy, peace, patience. That's what God is asking you for. He's asking you for all of this. Some of you say, I can't do it. Probably you can't do it because you haven't received God's love lately or you haven't received it at all. If you haven't received God's love, I would tell you, come to the cross, please. No, when he said, Father, forgive me, don't they doing? That man on the cross who felt just probably awful, saw Christ and just said, please remember me. 
and I love it. I, someone said, I was doing it in a forum, almost all theology, and I think it was time, all theology was gone. There was no baptism, there was no, it was just that boom, today you'll be in paradise. I do believe in baptism, you've got time, but then it was that simple. And I love what my professor always said at college, keep it simple, stupid. Jesus kept it so simple. He believed and went straight to heaven. I believe you got time, baptism, yes, because it's about witnessing. It's about showing other people. He had, that was his best witness right there on the cross. <laughs> Father, forgive me. And the other guy's probably looking like, what? He witnessed right there. Because we know there's two and the other guy was mocking him. That was a witness. And I'm a great believer. When you do fight, believe in Christ, we need to witness. Not on our own. We need to tell people. Tell people of the God's glory. So how is our attitude loving people? Just to sort of, just to get, almost finish here, to show you what is, he, what is this attitude? Let us not become weary in doing good. But at the proper time, we will reap a harvest if we don't give up. That tells me, as we've heard in, I think last week, about standing firm, put on your armor of God. This tells me just to stand and keep going. We've lost it in this Western world, and I'm, I'm like it with Amazon Prime, with the next day delivery. We're not very patient, are we? We want everything now. God does things in his timing. And we've heard testimonies. I prayed and I prayed, and after 20 years, one of my family members got saved. Got there. Took 20 years, but it got there. The Israelites took them 40 years. Could have taken four days. Took 40, 40 years. God's patience. And sometimes maybe he's actually working with you. Come on, pray for them, please. Pray for them. Don't give up. You'll see my glory. But maybe what they're saying as well, are they seeing the glory in you? Are they seeing glory in you? Or are you a stumbling block to the faith? And I hate to say it, the biggest stumbling block in the faith is us. We are the biggest. It's us. Dear Lord, please, please help them. Please help them. And then <laughs> we talk to them and our mouth is terrible and our patience is terrible. And we're no better than unbeliever. Do we do this? Therefore, as we have opportunity, do we as Christians look for opportunities? Even in our church. And this even says here, Therefore, as we have opportunities, let us do good to all people, especially those who belong to family of believers. Ah, starts with the church first. So are we finding opportunity? And actually, I know you are. So I don't want to say are you, because I know a lot of you in this church are doing so much behind the scenes. And well done. And I'll, I won't say, because I know you're like, no, well, I, don't want, I want your praise. You don't want man's praise. You want God's praise. But I know some people have found opportunities. And we need to. It's biblical. Have you found opportunities? Are you looking for them? They're right here. You've got the alphas coming up. You've got, Kenny has uh, said about uh, evangelism. You've got evangelism. You've got prayer nights. You've got uh, other, other things behind the scenes in this church. You've got the missionaries that we support. There's so much going on. If you've not done seats to opportunity here, and again, it's no condemnation. It's hopefully the spirit of God calling you. It says here, fine, therefore, as we have an opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially the family of believers. It needs to start at home. It says that. As, 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 as um, members of family, sometimes as we're, uh, in, in um, Timothy, I think 1 Timothy 8, I think it is, where it's saying that we've got to provide for our families. Provide for your families. If you cannot provide for your families, you're no better non-believer. If you've got families at home, families in church, go out. I really believe that. So are we serving in the local church? And, and again, if you, most of you are, well done. But I'll be looking for opportunities. Because when we do it in the church and we see, and it's like, it almost it's like a... Um, encouraging for us when we do this it gets into a habit and when we see God's glory and God's miracles here it gets easier out there oh yeah God can do that I saw healing and, and I saw the provision we can do it outside let's do it together as a community as a community I'm not alone because I know how scary it can be as I said as, as we've got people here in ministry it's hard but you're not alone if you want to do something like Teddy Bear Club, you've got Sandra, she'll help you. And then before Sandra, you had Liz helping. There's so many people, not alone. Or on Evangelize, well, at the moment, Kenny, on worship, you've got James. 
You've got some people who want to teach. There's so much. You're not alone in this place. You're not alone. There's no excuses. No excuses. And if there's other ministries I forgot, forgive me. There's Bible study. You can come along. Or even, even say, I want to do a Bible study. Can I, can I lead one? Come and see me. There are many opportunities in this church. But again, thank you for all the opportunities you have done. I don't want to be this minister sort of whipping you guys up and saying you're not. No. Well done for what you guys are doing. I know for the women's group, fantastic. I know people are going around the pastoring each other and they're calling each other. They're helping each other. So again, well done. Well done. And I think that's what's happening. When we are light to each other, people see that and they start coming through the doors. They start coming through the doors. Right, opportunity. Next one. We are who are strong. Some of you are mature Christians here. But are you bearing with people who are weak? Are you putting up with them who are weak? Some people don't know. They really don't. And I hope we're not legalistic with them. I've got a good friend, I won't, not here, who is very strong in his faith, but oh, very judgmental, very judgmental. They're wrong, they're wrong, they're wrong. No, don't be a stumbling block. Encourage one another. Encourage the weaklings. And yes, it says here, you ought to bear with them. I like the sacrifice, bear with them. God's saying it's going to be difficult. You ever discipled anyone? Not going to be easy. It's going to be difficult. Sacrifice of praise, sacrificing what loving one another, and now sacrificing by bearing with each other. If you're with someone, you're finding it hard. You're in a good place. You're in a good place. If it's too easy, maybe you're doing it on your own strength. Bear with them. Bear with them. Be kind. Be compassionate to one another. Forgiving each other just as Christ God forgave you. Again, God's glory. You feel forgiveness? Are we a people, a person who forgives others? Or have we taken our forgiveness, put it in our pocket and goes, thank you God, but no one for everyone else? How are we showing that forgiveness towards others? Maybe some people here aren't forgiving. All I would say to you is, go to Christ, receive his forgiveness. If you're a person who says, I can't forgive, then I would challenge you and say, then go to God and seek his forgiveness. And when you're in his presence and he gives you his forgiveness, it will be contagious for you to forgive. Because God said, if, you, if there's no love in you, you're not part of me. You're not part of me. So if you want to claim to be a Christian and you're not forgiving, please go to him. Please go to Christ. And then last one. Now we have this glory. Again, it is very short, I know, was some of the lists. I know there's many, many more. But we are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under the bowl. Instead, they put it on a stand and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others. And that's just doing it. Not, oh, look what I'm doing. Just do it naturally and people will gravitate you. I will say it to you right now. If people are coming to you, it's because they see the light within you. If people aren't coming to you, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they're not seeing that light and glory. When you are doing God's work, trust me at work, it's what, it happened to me years ago. When you start, you're a Christian and you say it and people start laughing at you, quietly people come up to you and say, oh, can you pray for me? And I'm hearing people nodding, oh, sorry, can you pray? There is someone who mocked you, they're like, can you pray for me? I don't want to be a burden. You'll be surprised. Yes, in the crowd, they're going to laugh at you. But they'll come quiet like a little lamb. Meh, <laughs> please pray. They will, because you are the light. So don't worry about the persecution you have. That's your pride. Don't worry about it. He even says that we talked about two weeks, three weeks ago. Someone who is holy and righteous, you will get persecuted. Sorry. I wish I can say you wasn't. You will get persecuted. But consider it pure joy, as James is saying, being persecuted for your faith. And even Paul said, wow, what a privilege. I can't believe how he got there. What a privilege that I'm suffering for Christ. Wow. Imagine saying that. Wow, he found that a privilege and an honour. In the same way, as I said, let your light, and finish on this, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds. And right, we're going right back from the beginning now, the beginning and to the end. Glorify your Father in heaven. That is how we glorify him. 
Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, first of all, that how you made us in your image. We may not feel like it or sense it, but Lord, your glory is within us. You created us so we could give you glory. Heavenly Father, may we yield our spirit to your Holy Spirit. What makes us who we are, what, how you gave us breath, may we say all our breath is to you. Lord, may we get rid of the flesh and live by the Spirit. The Spirit brings life. We know the flesh profits nothing. Lord, forgive us if there's some of us here who've chased after the flesh, concerned about the flesh. Or maybe, Lord, teach us, Lord, how we look after the flesh, which is not a bad thing. Sometimes like diets and things. Help us to think, are we thinking about our spiritual life in the same way? How we look to clothe ourselves. How we thinking about clothing ourselves in humility and in love. So, Lord, as we go about our weekly day to day, help us to realize, Lord, where are we putting our things? Are they spiritual or are they just for the flesh? Lord, teach us to be that great light. Teach us, Lord, that great light that we have within us, that your glory shines in us and we can be a beacon to you, a beacon to this community. So may our light shine, Lord. And Lord, if our lights have been dim for whatever reason, Lord, may we come and ask for oil, more oil in our lamp to keep it burning. There could be some of us, Lord, that are just tired, very tired. And hopefully, Lord, we can cry out and say, Lord, forgive me, I'm just tired. Give me your strength. Give me your love again. Give me that first love you gave me so naturally I can give something that I have. Because, Lord, there are some people in this room, quite honestly, can't give what they don't have. So overfill them with your love. And, Lord, if there's some people here who don't know their, your love, may they come to the cross like a thief and say, Lord, remember me. Lord, here I am broken. I need your love. So, Lord, we thank you for what you have done, what you are doing. We praise your holy name. Amen. We are now going to be singing our last song, To God Be the Glory.
Jesus the Son and give him the glory, great things he has done. Amen, amen, amen. And please, everybody, uh, stay for tea and coffee and tell of everyone of the glory that the Lord has done in your life. Amen. Amen.